a huge thanks to our sponsors for this episode, Manscaped, once again. Fantastic. Providing us a sponsor, the number one in pre- providing precision engineering for the family jewels. And the Britney Spears. Yes. And the... Uh, the Hulter. Bugle. The Hilter. It I'd... does work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They've got the uh, the blade, the Lawnmower 3.0, which has got the ceramic braid, which does all the, the trimming. It's got the nose trimmer. And the ear. Yes. And the ear in the uh, performance package. The weed whacker. The weed whacker. That's it. So if you get the performance package selection, you also get the boxers as well. And a t-shirt, I think. We took the boxes are exceptional. Yeah. The, you, uh, well, yours, yeah. No, I've been oh, saving them lad, for a special you, you, occasion. What? what? Your anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never, honestly. Yeah, I'm not really a boxer man, but I, 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 do, I do find them really comfortable. Yeah. Good length. Yeah. Perfect length. Have you been watching me manscaping? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm in the back of boxer shorts. <laughs> you also get a travel bag as well, which is nice. You can keep it all in. Take it off with you. Comes in handy. Mm. And... Of course, there's the aftercare because once you've uh, you've trimmed the old fella, you want to keep him in good condition, don't you? I would dare say I'd eat my dinner off my testicles after I've <laughs> yeah. after I've uh, <laughs> after seen him hanging. Floor. You could use him as a bin. <laughs> <laughs> Just come in. After after I've had a little uh, little spruce up, I dare say I, I could eat my dinner off him. I can't get that. I can't get that. No. Me, can you? What would you go with? Soup. <laughs> Soup in there. <laughs> Oh, it's tight. Just did dip him in some beer now. <laughs> Chopstick noodle. Is it yeah. <laughs> you stretch out, you could probably oh, get a bit of a canopy now. Yeah. Well, uh, we've all we've, we've got a uh, an offer, of course. As always. As always. All you've got to do is put in the code COSH20 at the checkout and you get 20% off. It's a fantastic offer, I must yeah. say. And you were, and you, the, 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 the products are going to take a lot more than 20% off, aren't they? Mm. They're, probably oh. gonna, they're probably going to give you 30% on the eye. You at, do at the, the very least. Exactly. A couple of inches at least. It does look bigger, doesn't it? Oh. Mm. No? Yeah, I can't. No? Can't agree with, nah. You always can't have a pa- side party. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can always see it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for the old, uh, the old Beckham, fuck, Beckham curtains. curtains, didn't you? <laughs> Downstairs. Just gives more room for the cabs to walk down. <laughs> 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 but yeah, just putting the code COSH20 at the checkout. Like a cab cat walk. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get 20% off. Itching. Itching that was the cab. <laughs> Give us that idea. <laughs> I was Brayford. Bray coming, mate, and was very quiet because he'd come from Burton. But, mate, from day one, he was like, yeah. Because he'd already, as I say, he'd had him for 10 years at Brayton. So he knew what type of character it was. He knew once he got himself up to level, fitness-wise, he'd fly and fair play to him. Mate, Bray was probably Quir- our best player. Is he for- not a bit quirky? Yeah. Bywater-like. <coughs> yeah. Remember when we said to yeah. Newcastle? Oh, yeah, he's strange. He's strange, yeah. but I got, on, I, got on, I got on with him really well. Like, he's not, put it this way, if you used to met him, and you've played in a team with them. If you're on a Saturday night, think I fancy a beer, the first person you call. <laughs> you're like, you'll he'll have a beer and you'll be Top a laugh. Of the list. And Brayford will be first on your team sheet. Like that type of lad where even if he's got plans, he would drop everything for you just because you're his teammate. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, I had a meal book, but give me five minutes and I'll sort it out. And he'd ring you back and be like, right lad, where are we meeting? Just he one of them yeah. characters. Yeah. Oh, he's, my mate. mate was being a nuisance. Yeah. And I think I didn't reduce my cell and sport him for a bit. And I went, oh, get rid of him, will you? Yeah. Thought nothing else of it. About five minutes later, he's like, pull us to one side. Yeah. He went, if you're being serious about getting rid of him, I can make a few phone calls. You know? <laughs> yeah. Basically, was, we're going to get him killed. <laughs> Could he get him? Oh, Could he get him? Yeah. Mate, <laughs> I, know, I know a few people I can get rid of him for. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, he's just pissed, mate. Yeah, just no, like, put him in a taxi. <laughs> he got a sniper on the hotel room. He put that taxi into flares. <laughs> but that ties in with what I said to you. Like, if you had, if he genuinely had plans and you'd said to him, mate, come and have a few pints with us, fucking missus is doing me head in, he would literally blow everyone out and be like, right, come here, come on, I mean, you'll go for a few pints. And he'd just sit foot with you and listen to you and be like, should we go somewhere else? Like, come on, let's go. So, but you like a totally into the football yeah. camaraderie, team oh, yeah, and all that stuff. Over like, his family? 
not over his family, but he he, he would still Ten make time, time for you. Yeah. Like, because obviously you go into the and you'd be like, oh, fucking hell, she's on my case. She's fucking moaning at me 24 7. But I'd be like, come on then, let's go and fucking have a game of pool. Let's go and have. So, where you, you'd hear the lads like, oh, he's having a bad time at home, and you literally get showered and you're gone, aren't you? You're like, well, my home's all right. He's not that, t- that character. He'd be like, he'd come over and sit next to him and be like, you're all right. Come on, mate, me and you're going to do this if you want. Like, have a Fair couple play. of hours away. Yeah. He was, that, he was yeah. that type of character. Like, he would do genuinely do everything for you. So from the minute he walked in, it was like, <laughs> yes, he's on our team. So <laughs> you were genuinely going to get somebody killed for you. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be just because you've said something to him and he'd be like, oh, I know him. Right, I'll, um, if, he, if he's being serious, he, mate, he, would, he would fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> we used to another one. He was in Marbella. And we're like, fucking, we'll go back to Derby. So we're on Nigel's centres to Marbella. So we're, I speak to him before I go. He's like, Dave, where's my credit card? As long as everyone's together, I don't care what you do. He said, the only thing is, no women, no fighting. Lads, so Who's say to the Clough? Lad, Clough, say to the lads, lads, He's given us his credit card. No women, no fighting. Lads like sound. So we're at, what's Bentley's place called? Um, La Sala. La, yeah, that in Marbella at the beach bar. So we're all in there. Couple of hours, lads are fucking giddy as fuck. They're like, right, come on, let's go on the banana boat. And Cluffy's paying for all this. Yeah. <laughs> Cluffy's going to give me his credit card. Let's go on the banana boat. Let's go on the banana boat. <laughs> like, giddy as fuck. So I'm like, <laughs> right, give us 10 minutes. So I'm like, what the f- Like, Sav didn't come with us, so the older lads stayed away. But we're all like 20, 21, 22, 23. So he's like, um, I've got his credit card. I'm thinking, I can't rock up to this fucking banana boat and just pay for 23 lads. They'd be on there. So I'm like, I'm going to have to ring them. So I phoned them, said, Gaffer, listen, all the lads want to go on the banana boat. <laughs> he's like, well, it's your decision. Are the... Or, are they all capable of being on a banana boat? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're fucking flying. Are you gaffer? So he's like, so he's like go on then. Just I want to go on a banana boat. Yeah, is, is that all right? <laughs> just put it on the card. So I'm like, go on, lads. He said, he said, we can go on. So this banana boat, there's like one side there, the other side there, and then all like where they have like the tar pole in the middle. So it's like a big one. So the fella's like, 23. He's like, eh, seven on this one, seven on that one. The rest of you can wait. So the seven get on there, seven get on there, put the fucking life jackets on, mate. The rest of them pile in the middle of these two banana boats. So the fella takes off and the boys, like, there's 23 of us on it now. And the lads are giving him fucking shit. Like, fuck off, you fucking Spanish bastard, whatever. Like, couldn't get us off. <laughs> so he slows the boat down and turns it and faces us and I'm thinking oh fuck we're in trouble now <laughs> mate he pulls his thing back flies at us so the rope by this time is now fully turned we've all come off so we're out, like we're all bobbing up and down in the water like crying laughing next minute like look at looking around counting everyone mate there's two people with their heads down just bobbing in the water like gone I'm thinking oh fuck so we swim over Jake Buxton a lad who's just been yeah. manager at Burton comes up, eye socket, fully smashed, like blood everywhere. Next one, Chris Riggett, dislocated shoulder, just bobbing <laughs> up and down in the water. Like, so I'm thinking, oh, fuck, <laughs> what are we going to do with you? <laughs> so we end up all getting back to shore, mate, the paramedics. There's an ambulance <laughs> call for me. Jake Buxton has smashed his eye socket. Chris Rickett's dislocated his shoulder. Right? <laughs> so they're both in the back of the ambulance. So I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm going to have to ring him again, aren't I? <laughs> so I'm like, gaffer, we've had an accident. He's like, what's happened? I said, fucking Jake Buxton looks like he's broke his eye socket. And Chris Rickett's done his shoulder in. He went, no one his words were. Don't worry, mate, they weren't playing on Saturday anyway. <laughs> 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 <I> just left. <laughs> oh, God, man. <laughs> mate, just left them. And Buckle had to drive all the way back from Spain, mate, in a, like, a Fiat 
But the well, the fear panda is little panda. No, smaller than that. <laughs> <laughs> With that fat brown in it, we used to call him fat brown. <laughs> <laughs> fat brown. Oh, the big. <laughs> oh, mate! You should have seen him. He's sweating for about thirty six hours. He went. Oh, he's because he couldn't fly. Mate, because he couldn't fly because of the pressure. <laughs> Chris Singer was left in Spain because he needed surgery on his shoulder, so we left him. <laughs> and fucking Bucco had to get a, uh, a car back. <laughs> Two and men he, left behind. Yeah, and he, that's, that's all he said. Don't worry, they weren't playing at the weekend anyway. <laughs> no women are no fighting. No women, no fighting. Yeah. He took it, so, mate. Uh, banana boats. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a true story, mate, all my kids' life. Yeah, <laughs> just bobbing up and down on the water, mate, just like that. So I was thinking, oh, no, they're dead. But, they, but apparently, when we spoke to Bucco, when he got back, the boat, actually, the corner of the boat hit him in the face. Don't know when it's because it drove straight at us. Killed him. As soon as the ropes pulled tight, it's just spun us, and the the boat hit him in the face. Me. <sighs> and fucking wiped them out. Mate. Good story though. That's yeah, awesome. banana boat. I'm getting up. Yeah, it was a fucking cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being sat on the pearl and someone goes, "Oh, well, lads, banana boat." Yeah. yeah. You'd be like, "Not in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> in the bar. What? <laughs> Twenty three of us. Oh, go on then. We'll go. Make the call. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> no, just... Sorry, Gaffer. We've lost two men. <laughs> Two men in battle. <laughs> it's like that same brother, right? Oh, he lost a couple, yeah. fuck it. That day with his words, don't worry, they weren't playing at the weekend. And the lads were like, oh, so we weren't fuming? It's like, nah, and he were like, oh, all right, no worries. Like two of them weren't bothered. They were like, oh, we were just worried that he was going to go mad. It's like, nah, he said it's sad. <laughs> two of them, mate, weeks after him, rehab, fucking Chris Riggett's like that. <laughs> fucking buck house eyes all over the place. You all right, lad? Yeah, it was fucking good, though, weren't it? <laughs> Imagine like, reading the article, like describing uh, the injuries. We had, we had two lads <laughs> come off a banana boat in Spain. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely incredible, mate. But that's, Funny. The, that's what, what, what is, he was what, like. What, is, what, what, what do you think his thought process were behind Do you think it was just like for the camaraderie then? It's the right must have been. The club's I think he was just brought up. I think because his dad brought him up that way. Mate, he didn't give a fuck. I think I'd have liked the players, players from after right. the day. And that's what, that's what, like you speak to Carlo and people like that who don't like him. But then when you've played with him, well, played for him and he trusts you and he believes in you, mate, you can literally do anything you want. As long as you, t- mate, you could say to him, you could come in Thursday and say, Gaffer, I took my missus out for a meal last night, had a couple of glasses of wine, I feel horrendous. He'd be like, go on, just get yourself off. But if you didn't tell him, and you're saying yeah, like a bag of shite, he'd have you in, he'd be like, because he knew everything that was going on in the city. So I would openly go in and say, Gaffer, I was out last night. And he'd be like, go home. As long as you're fifth for Saturday, I'd be like, yeah, I'll be fine. And as long as you played Saturday, you could just go, mate. Do you think that's a good thing, though, or a bad thing? <clears throat> in grand scheme of things. I think it was good for that club because he was changing. When I went there, we had, there was players on like, 25, 30 grand a week. And the club couldn't cause, couldn't sustain that money. So he brought in younger lads on less money, but were fully behind them. Mm. So he would he would wreck do you know like you'd sit in the dressing room and go, lads, we need we need to fucking get together here and have a couple of beers. Like it doesn't something's not right. But you'd make that decision as a team, wouldn't you? And you wouldn't tell the manager where he would spot that. Mm like a week before you even thought it. He didn't stick And be it. like, right, we're going here. Mm-hmm. Everyone. Like, even if you didn't drink, mate, Tom Carroll come on loan from Tottenham. Who didn't, hadn't drunk. We went to went to Madrid. We had four days in Madrid. We had tickets for Atletico Madrid, Barcelona. When Messi scored that free kick from the left-hand side of the penalty box and he whipped it in the far corner. We was at that game. Three tickets. Tom Carroll didn't drink. When we got to the airport, we flew from Luton. And Nigel was, we flew from Luton because Nigel was flying somewhere. <laughs> Honestly, <coughs> he hadn't even played, mate. This was his first day. We come through, passport, put our bags on. We had a text message, meet at this bar, because we were all arriving in dribs and drabs. Got there, Cluffy's there, what do you want to drink, son? Or do you drink? Tom Carroll comes up. Hi, Nigel, I'm Tom Carroll. I know who you are. What do you want to drink? Well, I don't drink. Pint of Guinness. <laughs> Gives him a Guinness, mate. Tom Carroll's spewing up off a pint of Guinness. By the end of the trip, mate, he was on fucking Jaeger bombs, <laughs> vodka. <laughs> mate, fully in. Like, just steaming constantly. <laughs> He's like a fucking club rep, isn't he? He's got a manager. Mate, pre-match meal. Pre-match meal on a Friday in the hotel game. You'd have, 
uh, in the hotel night before a game, you'd have your food and an alcoholic beverage of your choice every game. No matter what game, if it was the biggest game of the season, you'd have pre-match brownie, pint of brownie. Like, he would take your order before the day. So when you got to your pre-match, you'd have a pint. They're ready for you. Yeah, you'd have a pint and your meal. And he'd be like, right, off to bed, lads. I think I like him. I think mate, I he was love, brilliant. I, I love him, mate. <laughs> yeah. We went to, um, before I left Derby, we went to, oh, what's it called? It's only around the corner. We come down this way for pre-season. It's a golf, Formby, Formby All Golf Club. So we're there. We've got games around this area. So we're in Formby All, all fucking, all on the bottom floor. He's like, tonight, tonight's our night, lads, we're partying. Tonight's so the lads night. are like, fucking right. So he takes us all to Formby, pays for a big meal for everyone, drinks, takes us back to the hotel. He's like, Right, you've got till 12 o'clock. He sat in the corner watching his baseball because he loved baseball. <laughs> like, loved baseball. He was watching, remember a champ manager when you watched him, like the little circles were just fucking moving around. He was watching baseball like that. Sat in the corner about half 11, he went to bed. Gary Crosby, Andy Garnett, Martin Taylor, the three, his three staff. That's, he's fucked off, you know. Lads, I like, so what are we doing? It's like, fuck it, we'll just stay up. Mate, five o'clock in the morning, we're still all rocking around the hotel club. The, the rest of his staff are... <clears throat> yeah, said... they're in. They're, mate, they're still with us. They're like, don't worry, we won't tell them. So we're all still there at five o'clock in the morning. And a couple of the younger lads have, have gone to bed. So Andy, Andy Garner's gone to reception and got keys for their room. And because they're on the bottom floor, he's opened the door, gone in, and then... The other door had patios on to know the like putting green and stuff. But on the putting green, there was a pond just behind it and all ducks. So we're all on the at the pond picking ducks up, put the ducks <laughs> in the, the young lad's room, and all just fucked off to bed, mate. Like you can just hear, ah, 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 We planted 30 ducks in the bedroom <laughs> and all went to bed and like the lads come down and they were like, mate, there's fucking ducks in <laughs> It's like, mate, you should have seen you, you was fucking flying on the air. <laughs> <laughs> but Cluffy didn't know anything about it. Did he that's design though? Because Yeah, I think he Do you know like he said 12 o'clock and he's got a bed at half. Yeah, he knows you're not going to bed at 12 right, o'clock. He, yeah. And he's probably told his staff as well, yeah. Let him let him but it feels, to, it feels yeah. a bit more like yeah. you've been a bit naughty because he's... Mate, when the staff are pulling you and like fancy a cigar outside, mate, and you're standing there with the assistant manager having a cigar thinking, this can't be right, the season starts <laughs> in 10 days. Yeah. And they're like, don't worry, you won't know. And you're like, you sure? And you're like, yeah. He's like, go ahead, then I'll have another one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we put 30 ducks in the room and just left them. <laughs> Mate, I can just I can just remember people like taking their socks off, right? Just getting in the pond, mate, like, picking a dog up. <laughs> so walking, in, walking in across the putting green. <laughs> it's incredible. Honestly, mate, it's fucking brilliant. Obviously, you mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, the fracture in your skull. A bit sure I mentioned. Well, a significant moment in your career, let alone your your life. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think it was something that definitely changed me. Yeah. Um, because I was all, I wouldn't say I, was, I wasn't all in for the rest of my career, but it was all about football. And then at the time, I'd only been married 12 months. I had a baby who was one, a baby who was five. I mean, priorities changed, mate. Like, when someone tells you two millimetres away from brain damage, never mind recovering to play football. Yeah. Just to be the person I was before, I started to be less, not less professional, less serious. Like, as soon as the game was over, I never took it home. So obviously for anybody who didn't know know about the situation, how it happened, we're in a game. Yeah, we were playing, um, we were playing Southampton. Innocuous left. The left back was Gary Gareth Roberts was just up running up the line to cross it. And I was on a Jose Font's left shoulder. 
And I just tried to note that in front of him to get in front of him. And as he seen me coming, he sort of just put his elbow out to stop me, which just hit me in the, in the middle of my forehead, mate. And at the time, I didn't think it was that bad. Um, I wasn't unconscious. I remember lying on the floor and feeling like all the rest, this part of my head was swollen, but this, this middle bit here felt normal. So I was like, I'm lying with me hand on me head like, it hurt. And the physio was like, Dave, I'll move your hands. So as I've moved my hands, I've lifted up to like sit up towards him. And this, the look on his face, mate, was like just fear. And he was like, just lie down. And I was thinking, what the fuck? I was like, I'm fine. Like, I'm just, it's just a bang. And he was like, seriously, just stay where you are. Um, would, would there have been a lot of swelling? And No, so basically, the bit that I thought was swollen was normal. But the middle part of my head was indented. So it was a depressed fracture. So this whole right. part of my forehead here was like his elbow size, just completely in. So physios done what they, they were doing and put me in the ambulance. And I remember going to the hospital and he was like this. Like once the adrenaline had wore off, like this pressure where I felt like my eyes were coming, but they were going to just pop out my head. So I was like lying there, pushing my eyes in, thinking like, I'm in serious trouble here. Like, I don't know what's happening. So I remember the lady being with me, the paramedic, and I was explaining to her, that's it, mate, for five, six days, nothing. Can't remember a thing. Did they put, put you in a coma? I think it was a... Induced. Induced, like, let's get rid of the pressure, keep them sort of stable. But they fixed it and then woke me up. I think it was on the Monday or the Tuesday. Like, still woke up, mate, normal, looked down, I've got my fucking kit on still. I'm thinking, what the fuck? Like, it's just happened. But it was... I don't know if it was four or five or three or four days later. But from, I remember getting into the ambulance and the, the pressure and the feeling. But then after that, mate, nothing. Can't have you remember. seen it? Have you seen it back? No, nah, never. <clears throat> never seen it. The, the bit that I found difficult, Parky, was Sasha is from London. So she was in London with the kids. So I was in Derby, my mum and dad were at the game. So the bit that I found difficult was, I, remember, I listened to the one she's done with Hume, you know, with the, the way they cut him. I remember having a conversation in and out of consciousness where they wanted to do the same thing. And the only thing I was worried about was if they do cut me like that, will it scare the kids? And that was my only thought. It wasn't like the easiest or the best way to fix it. It wasn't about me. It was about, will that be something that when they grow up, they remember when daddy had his fucking, his face cut open mm. and he had these big scars and it was like a conscious decision of, can you fix it another way? Because I don't want my nine month year old daughter or 12 month, whatever she was at the time, remembering that because it's, yeah. I've only gone to play football. She doesn't know what's happened. And it was something, as we were saying then, just my mindset just completely changed from football to, no, you're a dad and you're a husband. Like that's more than mm -hmm. what, the, what the game is. And that was, <laughs> I think for the rest of my career, I was always, I was always fully in. But I also... But you could switch it off. I could, yeah. But I could never switch it off originally. Mm. But I learned to switch it off, yeah. You're right. You're then any ill regard towards Fonte or... Yeah, definitely because... Not because of what he'd done, for the fact that... He didn't contact me afterwards to see if I was okay. Yeah. Like as he swung it off. Yeah, oh yeah, he fully he fully swung it. But which is part of the game, which I'm not I'm not Yeah, I'm, so I'm, he's he's, he's, he's in his mindset, he's just doing his job thinking, right, I'm just gonna get my arm across yeah. here, stop him running. Which happens Yeah, but ten but, times. But a what, game. what what I don't like is he didn't contact me and then it was it was the the Euros were in Portugal a few years ago, weren't they? And we was actually on holiday and the, the baby well, she's not a baby, she's 10. He was playing for Portugal, and the first thing she, because so she doesn't like football, the first thing she seen was him and went, Daddy, there's that man that ate your face. She was one. She could still remember it. So she can she remember something. An and she yeah. can remember, people. she knows people have conversations in his name, and that he, he plays for Portugal. 
<coughs> and she picked him out, mate. He's playing in the European Championships. I'm never, never saying I was going to be at that level. But how can she remember mm. that he done that to her dad? So and that's why... If he'd have got in contact with you after and said, look, mate, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I think it, it's done, isn't it? Like, yeah. You'd think that's just what a given. Because yeah. I know, obviously, you and me and you and me situation were a little with bit Morgs, different. Because yeah, I played, obviously, Morgs was actually a few when yeah. I went there. And I played with Hume before and I've listened to you, the thing you've done with him, which mine was can, the same but different. Like, he wasn't asked. And that's the bit that hurt me. Well, yeah. Because, yeah, it's affected <laughs> me. But the, me being a footballer was never about me. It was about what I can bring to my kids' lives or their, their livelihood, like give it, them a better start. In a flip sort of way, <clears throat> do you think it actually helped you? you I know, think it made me a better dad. Yeah. I think it made me a better dad. Your mindset husband. and all that. Yeah. It, so I, uh, from this massive incident, <clears throat> yeah, which were obviously horrendous, on the flip side of that, in the long run, it might have made you... I think it definitely did make me, because you know what it's like when you're at that age, it's when, because I was flying at the time, it was all about where can I get to next, like mm. I said at the start, right, I've I've mastered the championship right now at the next level. And because I was <laughs> on the verge of that, I think I neglected, not, not neglected, ignored the fact that I had a young family, mm. I had a wife who was living away just for my... For me. So we are selfish bastards footballers, yeah, haven't we? Mate, unbelievably selfish. Even till last year. Like, my kids are 16 and 10. I'm living in Scotland. Mm. Like, and she's having to do this girl, run run a business, run that house. And it just comes to the point where I thought, fuck this. Yeah, we had like, Martin Allen on last week. And he's probably the only manager that I've spoke to. And he said he, he sees the wives and girlfriends just as important as the yeah. players. Mm. See, but I it never seen everybody, everybody but, but together. Ninety nine percent of football is done. No, nah. You you see it as all right. I'm gonna Scotland, right, to put food on my table. Yeah, but it was causing yeah. more damage. Yeah, mm. me being away. But I think to, the money's got nothing to do with it. The no. main thing is, yeah, you being a dad and you yeah. being there for them. I think it made me a better husband and Prior dad. The than priority it did. shift. Yeah, massively. I was Nigel with you. Nigel was unbelievable. Um, as I said before, he was in the hospital with me for probably two or three days. Give me 12 weeks off, completely off, didn't have to do anything. Just recover, just be normal again. Then when I got back to training, he would push me, but not push me. So I made me, I come back against, I think it was Birmingham, but two weeks before that I was scheduled to play and I trained on the Friday. And was way off it. Now, when you just you're like, this is too soon. Mm. I, he'd already named the team I was playing. And as I said to you before, if you speak to him and tell him, he's he's cool. Like, if I'd have played, and then he'd have said to me, he was fucking terrible. And afterwards, I'd have said, listen, I wasn't ready. That would hurt him. Mm. Where I just pulled him and said, listen, I'm fucking nowhere near ready. I need a mm. few weeks. And he was like, mate, take, out, take whatever you want. And he didn't say that as a weakness. <coughs> no. Some managers would, wouldn't they? Yeah, he was like... Even though you, I can imagine you were chomping a bit to get Oh, that. yeah, I was ready. I was In my mind, I was fully ready to play. Was there ever a point before that that you thought, <clears throat> do you know what, it's, <clears throat> is it worth it? You know, yeah. because obviously, if it, I'm, I'm assuming you had to wear a mask. And yeah, well, I was, and... I was advised to wear a mask for the rest of my career. Um, and in the Birmingham game, the one I started, I had it on for the, for the game. We got into the second half and... We had a corner and I'd been moaning at half time to him and said, listen, I need to get this off. It's fucking doing me head in. He was like, I'm telling you, I've spoke to Sasha, you take that off, you're coming off. Like, I'll give, yeah, I've given your wife my word that I'll protect you and look after you. You take that mask off, you're coming off. And we, we played the short corner, mate, and I took it off. Ben Davis crossed the ball in, mate, it's there, bang. Edda scored. So I'm like, shit. So I'll start running, over to, <laughs> start running over to Nigel. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I've got the mask in my hand. So as I get there, I like try to put it on there quick. No, before I get to him. <laughs> like he's not as seen as it. As if he's not noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so we have celebrated with him. Mate, before the game started, the centre circle, substitution for Derby coming off. 
number seven, Steve Davis, and I thought you couldn't. Protect you took him. me off, mate. Well, I, 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 I think it's good, though. Yeah. I, I like thought it. you'll come, but I think yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That must oh, have been at the time because I was in the middle of the so game. So he's put, he's put in <coughs> the team's results. Yeah. Took uh, me off. Aside for... And that was the Saturday. And on the Tuesday, we were playing... I think the Southampton game was probably the was actually the Tuesday after, but the, the Tuesday after the, the, me debut was uh, me coming back from the head injury was Blackpool at home. So on the Monday morning, he's pulled me and he said, "Listen, you're wearing the mask. Yeah. If you want to play, you're wearing it." I said, "Come on, please, let's go back and see the fucking the surgeon and see what he says." He's like, "Right, I'll get you on for Tuesday morning. The game's Tuesday night. Go and see him." So I went on my own. I spoke to him. Sergeant was like, you need to wear it. Yeah. I said, right, I understand you're advising me I need to wear it, but what is the worst case scenario if I don't wear it? He was like, well, if you get caught again, regardless, you've got the mask on or off, it's going to happen again. So I said, so this actually isn't helping me. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen mm. if I've got it on or not. He was like, yeah, but it's just that little bit more protection. Mm. I said, well, I don't want to wear it. And he was like, well, as your surgeon, I can only advise you. If you decide you don't want it, it's up to you. Mm. So I phoned him straight afterwards, like, listen, he said I don't have to wear it. I played on the Tuesday the Tuesday night, we beat Blackpool 2-1. I scored two, another header. And then from that day, it was forgot about. Were you, That's an uh... unbelievable moment, though. <coughs> you couldn't write that. Do you know what, mate? Ian Holloway, after the game, somehow got the, my dad's number and phoned him after the game and said, I've never seen anything like it. He said, you should be so proud of your son. The fact that he's even come back, but in his first two games, he scored three goals. Yeah. And he, yeah. he didn't phone me. He phoned me dad. Don't See, even know how he got yeah. them. That's, that's the difference between Ian Holloway and Fon yeah. Fonte, whatever it's fucking mm. called. No, he didn't have to do that, did he? No, he just, he just lost. It's just a class, mm. yeah. class act, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did you join you join back up with Nigel at Sheffield United later on in Yeah. Career? Um so after I left Derby, I went to Bristol City. After there I went to Blackpool. And it was I was at Blackpool and it was just it was just fucking carnage, mate. Yeah. I think the first game of the season. It was it was the first year was good under Paul Ince. Like couldn't have a bad word to say about about him. He left. Thomas left. He was probably our best player. Barry Ferguson come in, who to this day is the best footballer I've ever seen on my team. Like, unbelievable. He came to Fleetwood, if you remember. He yeah, came yeah, he could, yeah. Earlier. Unbelievable, mate, isn't he? Yeah. Like, Good. can't can't even... Not when you're playing with someone and you're thinking, how have you just done that? <laughs> like, his passing was just incredible. So Fergie become manager. And then Jose... That difficult transition? <coughs> no, I think he Play was just... manager. He's just that type of character where he just breezed yeah. it. He had everyone's respect anyway. So it was just naturally easy for him to make the switch. So it was, I enjoyed the first year, but the second year, mate, was a fucking Jose Riga come in and signed 15 players that I'd never heard, like, not only have I never heard of, but players with, you know, when you look at a team sheet and you go, I know we're in trouble there. Like, teams must have been looking at our team sheet thinking, fucking hell. <laughs> Who the fuck's this? <laughs> Who the fuck's this playing here? <laughs> we turned, mate, I'll tell you a quick story. First game of the season, we're playing Forest away, City ground. You know what it's like, first day season, red hot. So we're in the meeting, Jose Riga, speak English a little bit. So puts the team up. There it is, starting 11, seven subs. Going, naming it. Uh, we, can, we can see it, he's naming it. Like, all right, okay. Not not great. But we are where we are. That's what we've got. We started pre season with five players. Like we are where we are. Fuck it. We'll see how, how we get how we go. Next minute, chief executive comes bursting through the door, walks to the front, speaks to Jose Riga. Jose Riga's to the analyst guy, down, 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 down. They're like, What? Team team down, down. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Five minutes later, puts another team up. Completely different team. But now we've got two subs from 18. So we've had the starting 11, seven subs, 
we've now got a different 11 and two subs. So the lads are like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Chief executive, my fault, I forgot to register players in time. Wait, we turned up to the city ground with 13 players and the two subs with both goalies. <laughs> Championship. I swear to God. Club. <laughs> Same, honestly, on my kids' lives, that, that's what happened. And I was like, fuck this. <laughs> it's fucking, red it's, fucking red. <laughs> it's red hot, mate. He can't play. He can't play. You know, if you'd have been in here, you might have, you yeah. might have got a bench. <laughs> mate, it was red hot. You know what it's like, first day of the season, red yeah. hot. You're thinking, like, we've got seven or eight that you can bank, you're getting 90 minutes out of. There's three or four that are going to be flying. One yeah. will be able to kick in. Yeah, mate, you're looking over after about an hour when Michael Michael Antonio's been running at you all day. <laughs> Our right backs needs a fucking car, is having a cardiac arrest. You look over, mate. We've got two foreign goalies. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Did he give catch him on the side? <laughs> right back, no, 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 not me. Did he give one of the other keepers a run? <laughs> out just to... No, did he fuck? Just left them. That, that was how it was, mate. It was just an absolute car crash. How was Ranger? <clears throat> Wasted talent. Completely. Were he, were, he, were he good? Yeah. Not Parky, unbelievable. If he had dedication that I'd say us three had to pro prolong your career and keep going, maybe he'd be sitting in a fucking mansion somewhere in the world with life made. So was he just not... Like, I know his timekeeping was meant to be horrific. Mate, wasn't it? Well, this is the thing. So he would drive from Newcastle to the training ground at like four in the morning to make sure he was there for training, but then sleep in the car park and still miss training. <laughs> <laughs> but he's there. <laughs> you could have given him a knock. Well, he did. He'd knock on his window, he'd say, give me five minutes. And you still end up waiting for him. Mate, he's been there for five hours and he's still late. And he'd be asleep in his car. But it was just... Just no getting through to him. It was just that. Niall, yeah. But he wasn't... He, you know, I've seen things with him in the past where I definitely think he was tarnished with other people speaking about him. Clubs-wise, like, his card was marked. Mm. From more managers? Yeah, definitely. Or from mistakes he'd made. Yeah, because there was something about the gun one when he put something on Instagram. <coughs> yeah, well, they're mistakes he's already yeah. made, but it definitely followed him. So I think he got to the point where he was like, no matter what I do... Yeah. No one's ever going to forgive me or give me a chance. So what's the fucking point? But he was that good, were he? Because I've never yeah. actually seen him play. Unbelievable, mate. He would... But the thing is... Like, he turned up to Blackpool two stone overweight and was unbelievable. If he's that good, he could have got that other chance, though, couldn't he? Nah, because... If he'd have put his there's always, uh, No, because there's always... Morrison. Because every time he got to somewhere where you'd think, right, he's ready, there'd be someone else speaking to, about him or to him. So say he's flying for Blackpool and... You know, where uh, Norwich and Middlesbrough want to sign him. As soon as they speak to someone for a reference, it's gone. Like he's got mm -hmm. no chance. He was only he only came to Blackpool because we had fucking twelve players. He was on absolute peanuts at one. Mate, he was on. Money. I think he was on two hundred pound a game, uh, two hundred pound a week, and three grand a game. Yeah, which wasn't fair. I remember going. You know when you drive to Bloomfield Road and you go under that bridge and there's the garage on the corner. I remember coming out to training. And going into the garage to put petrol in my car. And the fella who worked there said, so I put, say I put 50 quid in my car. When I got inside, he was like 100 pound. I was like, why? He was like, Niall filled his car up and said, whoever comes in next will get it for him. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go. And, and a pack of rebels. <laughs> <laughs> so you then know. But he was a nice kid. Like, so you couldn't not like him? No, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't not like, like, I'm a, I like to give people a chance. And from what I've seen of him and the time I spent with him, you'd love him. Yeah. yeah. But it's because you'd hear it from someone else who would change it to someone else. And by the yeah. time you get it, it's like six, seven down the line. It's and the story is completely yeah. different. If you take, if you, if you meet him and take him as face value for yeah. what, when you're Which you should do it. anyway, shouldn't you? Yeah, he'd like, yeah. He, listen, he turns yeah, up late for training. All right, well, he's late for training, but when he's training or when he's playing, he's our best player. So can you not look past the fact that he's late for what he's given us? And some people can't wear I tie to. I'm like, yeah. it's just sad, isn't it? 
Yeah. Yeah. I think that's terrible. His career was wasted. Ravel Morrison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just think, what, 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 what he'd be up there, mate. That's another level, though, isn't it? With, Ravel Morrison. With yeah. one of my best. Yeah. Fergie, I'd say Fergie is the best, but he'd be up there. He was just, his ability was just. But he, he's one of them where you're thinking, oh, if I could just grab you and shake you and be like, think about what you're actually doing yeah. there. Yeah. Think of all the people that have tried, though. Yeah. And that's, yeah, the, and that's the point. There's no point in yeah. getting into it with him. And he gets to the point where you start seeing your ass with him. Yeah. Gets to the point where you, you, you just think, pissing it windy. Yeah, no, I'm not even helping him. Because he will end up falling out with him. Yeah. It? But that's where it turns to, isn't it? So yeah. I'd rather just, he's late, sound, he's late. Do one I'm playing off front with me on Saturday, fucking million percent. Somebody asked about, um, mm. a, just a quick one on Bristol City, about McInnes. And they was asking if there was a lot of bad eggs. He wasn't, he wasn't t- targeting <laughs> at you. But he just said, was that changing room for a... No, they, at Bristol City, the only, from what, when I turned up, i become really close mates with Jody Morris, who was with Dell at St. Johnston. So when he left and come to Bristol City, um, I was still at Derby, Jody was still at St. Johnston. Jody Morris, who was with, who were with Frank? <coughs> Jody Morris. Yeah, at Chelsea. So they were thick as thieves, best mates. Jody was offered the St. Johnston job. Dell convinced them to come to Bristol City and he'd put him on the staff. He'd still be a player, but he'd be on his staff. And because Jody was well, well respected with the players and the lads as a player, the lads were on his side and Dell didn't do anything. Didn't put him on his staff. Didn't even have him in the squad. So, so it's McInnes like, did him. Yeah, so McInnes brought him. And everything he'd promised them, he didn't do. But that by this time, Jody was well in with the lads yeah. and respected because of what he'd done. So what was he doing? They just as a training player, he was just, just blanking him. Literally just blanked him. I was there for nine months. Dell left after about six. McInnes left after about six months. Never had one conversation. He used to ignore him. Literally, it just sounds weird. Blank him. Yeah, but. By this time, he's well got us. Like Jody had all the lads behind him. Like we were, it wasn't players against manager. It was like what you were saying about Colo. Like, sees him with some respect. Like he's fucking, yeah. he's been a top player. Yeah. Like you've promised him these things. Like so, it's different if you've said he's going on the staff, so you've decided better against it. But to not even have him in the squad, like he's just been off the job. He was mm. going to be manager at St Johnston. So he's at his, <coughs> obviously his he's career's good. gone where it's gone coaching-wise, but he could have fucked his coaching yeah. career up, wouldn't he? Well, mm-hmm. listen, if you was offered a, a job to manage an SPL team and you turned it down because someone offered you something, once you got there, it wasn't that, you'd be fucking spewing, wouldn't you? Like, he, maybe he was oh. playing in reserve games. And what he is good approach at playing the reserve games? Jody was, mate, fittest player there at 34, 35. Technically, probably one of the best there. But he didn't just think, oh, um, uh, cause a sting can be a bad egg, he was. No, he wasn't. He, to be fair to Jody, he never, which I think he should have, because I think I would have. But he never, he was professional in the way he went about his business. But Dell was like, so the day I signed, I remember having a conversation with McInnes the day before. He was like, listen, the board, they give me three and a half million quid. I need to get a striker and a centre back. So I was like, okay. So I think they ended up getting me from Derby for a million. So he had like two two million, whatever he had left, to go and buy a centre back. Mate, the day I signed my contract, I walk in his office and Sam Baldock's sitting next to me. And I'm like, are you the centre back? <laughs> <laughs> like, he spent his money on two strikers. I remember playing, we played at Blackburn, mate. Uh, Blackburn came to us, we got beat fo- uh, 5-4. At Bristol, at uh, Ashton Gate, 5-4. Because we were fucking hopeless. We couldn't defend. But you, you could score. You could we defend. could score. Mate, it was me and Sam Baldock, with Sam Baldock up front. We had Albert Adoma on the right, Yannick Balassi on the left. Mate, you're telling me you couldn't fucking just stand there and tap them in? Yeah. Mate, it was brilliant as a forward. But defending-wise, mate, we were fucking hopeless. We would literally concede three or four every week. <laughs> but... 
that it was his decision. He went and bought the players. So I think that's what caused the problems and why he got sacked. Because I think what he tried to do was he had me and Sam as one and two. So if he didn't get me, he'd get Sam. If he didn't get Sam, he'd get me. But he put both that much into both of us. He ended up with both of us. I've got an ugly left. I think that's what happened. I think Sam left West Ham and I came from Derby. But then, if you're a championships manager at that time, you're saying, right, I'll, he's just scored 15 for Derby. He's just scored 20 for West Ham. There's 35 goals. Put them up front. We've and hopefully we'll outscore everyone else. <laughs> but we didn't, mate. We, fucking, we were like a fucking shiv at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Who signed you at Bradford? Oof, fucking Phil Parkinson. You got the, you one of the few that got the call back? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. At the time, yeah. <laughs> he answered the phone. Yeah, what a strange, strange fella. Um, I don't know, it's just... I think as you can you can tell from the rest of what we spoke about, like I do try and give everyone a chance. And I don't take like if if I spoke to someone who were like he's a prick him, like I'd give him the opportunity to speak to me and gauge off him. But I'd been there take like me your own opinion. Yeah, I'd been there about three months. The season was well well started. And he had this thing like I'd be say I was sub on the Saturday, he'd he'd bring me on. I'd do well, and then Monday morning he'd be like, mate, you're playing Saturday. So you're like, right, okay. So then it comes to the Friday, and he used to do this weird thing where he would like, he'd call the back four in, tell them not to play in, then call the midfield four in, tell them that they're playing, then call the two strikers in, tell them they're playing. So like it was secretive, but the lads were like, mate, I know what you're doing, you fucking knob. <laughs> so he, t- he told me on a Monday for about three weeks that I was starting, and then it comes to the Friday, he was like, eh, hey, James Hansen, Billy Clark, will you just come in? So he'd done it for two weeks on the spin. I thought, I'll let it go on then, that's fine. So come down on the Saturday, scored against Rochdale. We drew 2-2. On the Monday, he pulls me in, he's like, Dave, oh, he's fucking brilliant there. He got us back in the game. Like, you start on Friday, eh, uh, Saturday. So I'm like, all right. Friday morning, Steve Parkin comes in. Clarky, Hans, the gaffer wants you. So I'm like, fuck you. So I walk in. <laughs> with, the, with the two of them. I'm like, right, like, Parky, what's happening? He's like, Dave, what are you doing? I said, oh, you told me on Monday I was playing. He's got his tactic boards, 4 4 2 behind him. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's what it is. Man, he takes a player out of midfield and puts it as a 4 3 3. <laughs> Clarky, you're going to be on the left. Hans, you're on the right. And Dave, oh, you're down the middle. And I was like, you fucking shit. <laughs> by, the, by the way, James Hansen is not the, the left of a three player, is he? Mate, honestly, he had 4 4 2, and he'd done it for, like, to me for two weeks. I thought, I'm coming in with you. And I just walked in, and his face was like, he used to have like, this weird thing. You go, Dave, oh, son. And I'd be like, Gaffer. He's like, what are you doing in here, son? I was like, you've told me, I'm playing. I'm looking, thinking, four, four. I said, am I left mid, Gaffer? He's like, no, son, no, no. Pulls it down, mate. <laughs> Turns it into a four, three, three. <laughs> but after we leave, mate, he calls one of the midfielders in. <laughs> Change your plan, lads. <laughs> <laughs> mate, he turned the team into a four, three, three. <laughs> Oh, and the midfield already been really in as well. I oh, made the midfielders were in first. <laughs> he called. He called the one. I think it was Mark Marshall, no, the winger who's at Northampton. He was at Charlton, places like that. Called him in Marshy. He was like, "Dave, oh, you cunt!" Said, "Mate, I'm not. Uh, uh, it's not my fault." Like he told me, I was playing. <laughs> I was just seeing. I just wanted to see his reaction. Honestly, he just he looked up like that. But it like he went. What it is, Sam? And just pulled it down, mate. The little, little, little spewing your thing. Yeah, the little red one. Yeah. We're playing a 4 3 3. No, I was like, you fucking gimp. <laughs> That's fucking scandalous, by the way, from a manager. like... Yeah, because it, because what he was trying to do was, which I didn't like, trying to keep everyone happy. Like, if I'm not playing, just say to me, you sub. Don't pull me on Monday because you think he's going to go fucking west here. He's come on for three weeks on the spin and scored. And I'm not giving him a chance. 
Just be a man. I'll, just keep, say, I'll keep him yeah. happy for yeah. Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. He, just so he doesn't kick off. But yeah. then on Friday, I'll just I'll just swerve him. Mate, honestly, I used for the first two weeks, I used to watch him go in his office and I'd think I'll catch him. And by the time I got to the office, it was like, it was like he fucking disappeared. Who said that the other day? He's got a, he's got a trap door in his Mate, office. He <laughs> wasn't even another door. I used to walk in there and know when you're knocking, you wait. I used to just knock and walk in. And he was never there. <laughs> think See, you think he was on the table? Yeah. You know, I used to be like... Cupboard. cupboard like, I used to be like, what the... Where the fuck's he gone? Like, he could genuinely disappear. Who said that? I can't... Who said he had a trap door in his office? Mate, 100% there was something in his office. O'Leary? Danny Mills, you're O'Leary, all right? No, no, it what was about, about Phil, Phil Parkinson. Parkinson. Oh, sorry. Oh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Mills? No? Mate, 100% there was something character. in his office. Because I would watch him walk in and think, I'll get him now. And by the time, mate, it was here to that door. By the time I got there, he was gone. <laughs> just did a vu. No. Remember I just don't be, he had like a lever yeah. and his chair just went. <laughs> mate, I, mate, I used to, God, yeah. so when you walk in, I used to walk in and be like, I'm fucking losing a plot. <laughs> I've seen him walk in here. <laughs> and then you'd get to training ground. Like, because you used to have like a two minute walk to the pitch. And you get to the pitch and he'd start dead quick. Like, though, so you couldn't get him. You'd be like, Gaffer, and he'd be like, right, lads. And like, just cut over you. So you're like, right, I'll get you after saying. And so then he'd set a, a small side of the game up. So you're playing and you can see him. And then the next minute, mate, you look around and it's like, where's that cunt gone? <laughs> <laughs> Glennon. Yeah, yeah, it was. Glennon. Glennon. Yeah, you yeah. get to the, mate, you get back up to the dressing room in his office and he's not even there. <laughs> Unbelievable. But the fact I just thought, fuck this, I'm walking in. You can you put it on his toes there and he's after yeah. make it because well guarantee if you'd have rang him, he's not answering. Yeah. <laughs> oh well he done it, he done it. Um so my contract was up the last day of the season or after the finishes, he calls you in, Donny, he's like, Dave, oh, we'll get you the deal sorted. I was like, yes, yeah, sound. I was never gonna stay anyway. So he phones me about 12 days later, and I swear to God, it come up Parkinson, Phil Parkinson off. And he leaves me a voicemail. <laughs> So I'm 40, scabby that again? So I phoned him. I phoned him as he's still recording a, a voicemail. A voicemail hasn't even come through. Welcome to me voicemail. So I'll listen to it. Dave, I'll, I know I told you I'd give you a deal. Um, I spoke to the owners. They want to pull some money out. Um, I can offer you a deal. It's on this amount. But before I can even answer or, like, say... What is it? I know it's a voicemail, but, you know, listen to the message. I'll ring you back. What are you talking about? I'm not even going to disrespect your son. So we might, it's best we go our separate ways. I'm like, mate, you haven't even given me the option. Like, I might have took the pay cut. Yeah. So I phoned him. Mate, I've never spoke to him ever. The only time I... So I didn't speak to him after I left there. He then went to Bolton. And my first game for Rochdale was at Bol uh, away to Bolton. We beat them 1-0 and I scored. And I walked over to him and said, 4 3 3 son. And he just uh, <laughs> looked away. Thought, you're fucking not bad. That's what he used to do. Mate, it's fucking actually quite tragic. Uh, it's, it's, it's painful. Right. It's painful for He's him. He's honestly the only manager I could say, prick. I know. Just imagine a new manager coming into office and like putting a new picture up and just hammering in wall winch. <laughs> 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 You end up in Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's like he could disappear. I don't know what he'd done or how he'd done it, but it was good. What a fucking sleep. Um, Honestly, mate, he'd done it. For, it might even have been two or three or four weeks that he kept telling me he was playing on the Monday. But then, you know that feeling that where you get Monday and Tuesday, they're on you, and by Thursday, they're going cold. Yeah. <laughs> and then Friday, it's fucking freezing. Oh. <laughs> I thought I'm getting you here, mate. We've heard that before that he what rang, and then, but it's gone straight, goes to answer phone. But how do you even do that? No, it's, he, it's like he just block, he's blocked you. Like he's, blocked you call, he's, call. he's rang you, and yeah. it's cut so, off and got to your voice. Yeah, but, he, but he, it's like, no, because he just rings and then just hangs up dead fast. So you've got a, a Phil Paginson missed call. Yeah, so ah, ring, and yeah. then blocks you, yeah, and but, then you and ring him. Yeah, and he just, and it's like, what the fuck's going on? That was what he left me. What a fucking Dave O'San. sneaky bastard. That's how he used to speak. Dave O'Sam, you're playing on the weekend. I'm like, well, I'm not mate, am I? Let's be honest. <laughs> well, can you ring and leave, leave a message on someone's answer form rather than them calling? I don't know why he does it, mate. 
but it's fucking good. <laughs> yeah, so it flashed up and left straight away. <laughs> so he's rang you, he's hung up, you've rang him back, he's tried to ring you back. Yeah, so while so he's got he... your voice, man. Ah. And then he leaves me a message. But I haven't even got time to listen to the so message. So he waits for you to ring him, then he rings you back <laughs> yeah. so that he knows. Yeah, it's a so... game of percentages, you've got to time that and call <laughs> yeah. back. Perfect. Yeah, but by the time you've listened to his message, your contract was there. But then he's not disrespecting you, so it's gone. <laughs> It's a whirlwind, isn't it? Yeah. It's by a whirlwind end. 30 seconds. That's a by lot of end. effort to not disrespect somebody. Yeah. By the end of the phone call, is an absolute gone? iPhone genius, bless him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking sneaky bastard. <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever seen. Like, the bywater was the clash, mate. But for a manager, it's a, he like just glanced over his shoulder because it was 4-4-2 and he went, 4-4-3, four, four, son. <laughs> I'm just like, cringing for him. Yeah, but I was even like, God, but that's not me on the left, is it? I haven't got that. Clarky, you're on the left, son. <laughs> Hanson's like fucking a beanpole. He's got no rifles. Hans, you're on the right, son. And I'm like, <laughs> my down the middle, yeah. <laughs> that's piss poor, that, innit? <laughs> Quality, but piss poor from him. Tell us about uh, Joe Thompson, mate. What an absolute legend. Oh, yeah. Absolute hero, mate. I was lucky, you know, because when I went to Rochdale, I was sat next to JT. Um, we used to pro- pretty similar, 4 3 3. So I'd be down the middle, Ian Anderson on the left, JT on the right. So the three of us sat next to each other. So we had a, a great relationship. We all got on really well. I think we were playing MK Dons away when I think it, the cancer was back, but JT hadn't told us. And it was just little bits in the game, knowing you know something's not right. So there was things happening where I was like, fucking hell, that's not like JT, because JT was fit as fuck. Like, he could do everything. Obviously, after the game, he tells us all that it's, he's poorly again and it's, it's not great news. <clears throat> so we didn't see him for... How long was he in? I know we've had years of Adam on. He was in hospital for ages. Mm. And his first day back, he come to the gym. We were just on our, like... First day of pre-season, just cycling. JT come in like he left a beast and come back as like, it was like he was a child again. And I was thinking, fucking hell. Like all the lads, oh, JT, hope you're well. Like I'm not that type of person. Like he's obviously not been well. So I was just a bit like, what's happening? Standoffish with him. Like, not standoffish, but like, I just got straight back to how he left. Yeah. Yeah. So in the afternoon, we had um, the team photos. So he's obviously... If you look at last year's one to this year's one, there's going to be a massive difference. But I didn't have, didn't it's not that I didn't have the courage. I didn't have like a, no that thing to ask him a question, like how are you feeling, mate, because it's it's written all over his face. You think you not yeah. think you wanted to know the answer in case it weren't a good answer? Yeah, because at that, he's he's must have heard that question. How are you mm. feeling? How are you feeling? I thought, fuck that. I'm not going to ask that. So I just went in the physio room and got the no the black under up. So I just. He was just sat on his bench, so I just started wrapping his head in it. I just said, lad, we've got your hair back. <laughs> just as a joke. Yeah. Mate, it was the best thing I've ever done in my career because he just jumped up and he was back, mate. Like, started laughing his head off. Yeah. Like, but I had tears of joy. Mm. What he, he was needed? Like, he was like, back to not. Yeah. I've been back for four or five days. I've just been waiting for someone to be like, no, there you go. Mate, and it wasn't something I had thought of. You know when you all put your kits on and everyone's in the mirror putting the fucking the gel in thinking, oh, look, the bollocks, and he's just sat there and I was like, yeah, lad, we'll put some gel on yours for you. <laughs> I just wrapped his head up. Like, just as, to get his airline, mate, and it was the best thing I've ever done. Because the look on his face, and he was like, oh, take it off, let's redo it. God, fucking, I'm covering his eyes as he was all gone. <laughs> like, just wrapping it up. Look, look like, come out really, uh, Teddy. <laughs> yeah. I that imagine was... in that situation, that's exactly what he needed. Yeah, but, so it, yeah. Was but it wasn't Back to normality, like... It wasn't something that I, like, thought... I was finding it awkward to be, like... to approach him. Uh, like, he's been sitting next to me for 12 months. And then mm. when he comes back, you're like... You know how it is... When you're injured and you walk to the stadium and the play, fans are like, oh, when are you back? When are you back? When are you back? Before you get to the door, you're like, fuck off. Yeah. Mm. As nice as they're trying to be. Yeah, tight. it's not their fault. But I think because every time he spoke to someone, how are you feeling? Oh, you look well. Well, he didn't. He looked, he looked good, but he didn't look well. Yeah. He left 12 months ago looking well. Mm-hmm. 
Like he's not the same <laughs> person. I think so, he said in, in the podcast that I don't know which can't remember which player it was, but he was in the gym and he he was feeling a bit awkward and he didn't want the other players to feel yeah. awkward. He said someone just brought a five k dumbbell in or something. Yeah, I think it was Hendo. It was a Hendo. Yeah. So you, but I think that's the way. Because although they've gone through it, and I don't, I don't think. Well, we we definitely can't imagine the feelings he's gone through, and the pain and the loneliness he's felt. But when he's back, like leave that now. It's gone. There's no point in me asking him if he feels okay because he clearly doesn't. Yeah. He Maybe. obviously feels good because he's back. Yeah. Mm. But he's forward. not. He's not the same person who left. So let's not sugarcoat it. Really. Yeah. It's yeah. like just because you know if you've been if you've had an injury. For three or four weeks, when you come back in, the lads don't go, well, how's your injury, Parky? They're just like, how oh, Parky's training? Yeah. Like, so I didn't want to give him more mm. of, oh, you look well, mate. How are you feeling? All that. It's just... I know. It's so not the thing like... is, you, you think, if you put yourself in their shoes, what would you want? And I'd always want somebody to come and take the piss. Yeah. And I think that's what normal. I give him that. And, and it sounds like... Yeah. That's he's appreciated. That goes on to... Which is probably one of the me best moments in football. Because as I said to you earlier, it was never about me. But the last game of the season when Chase T scored against Charlton, after I left Rochdale, I debated retiring because I don't think every, anything would ever feel that good again. Just mm. seeing him. Is that when he scored the winner? When he scored the winner, yeah. Like I was going to retire and I didn't, there was nothing to do with me because I thought I'll never get that feeling ever again. Like just the sheer joy. Was it t like tea, like emotional? Oh, mate. The best feeling apart from my kids being born I've ever felt. Unbelievable. Just, mate, I've watched it on YouTube and I, even then. Mate, you, you, like, you get involved. And now I Never mind. No, no, Just no, no, because no. he's that type of guy. Like, he gives everything. He loves his family. He loves his job. But he just works so hard. When he's scoring. He's just a top, top yeah. guy, isn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, if you, if you, if you, want, your daughter best, to, if you want your daughter to fetch somebody home. Yeah. He's yeah, one of the you're best. happy if she fetches yeah. him or my, yeah. He's definitely one of the best, but I'd be lying if I thought, like, when I left Rochdale, I thought, I ain't going to feel that good again. And I was nothing to do with it. Mm. The only thing I was, me, Keith Hill brought me and him on at the same time. And that was it. So we were warming up. And he was, to be fair to him, when we were warming up, he was like, mate, something's good going to happen today, you know. Like, we were down. All them were winning. So even if we won, we were still going down. All them end up losing. <clears throat> but all the way through the warm-up, I think we come on in the 60th minute. From after half-time, I was warming up with him, and he kept saying, something good's going to happen. And I was thinking, fucking hope so, lad. But do you know where you just wipe it off? Yeah. But I think, I suppose, because he's had <coughs> all that doom and gloom, I don't know, maybe he just he had a... Six cents. Six cents, that something was happening, because he was saying it, mate, and I was thinking, fucking hope so. He was like, I'm telling you, something good's going to happen. And I, JT, to be fair to him, he's a top player, but I've never seen him score a left-footed shot. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's gone in, I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> but it was just... And even me. After, afterwards, mate, like... You know what it's like? We've all played for huge clubs, and Rochdale isn't a huge club, but it's a good club. So you play in front of 30,000 and it means something, but because it's so small, it meant so much more. I know what you mean. It, it, Do you yeah. know what I mean? You get that feeling for just a place where you're like, yeah, that's me. I think, you feel, I think you, as a player, you feel how much it means to put more, yeah. the less people that yeah. are watching. The less that are there, yeah. Because they're not there for the glory. They're <laughs> there for the big <laughs> games. The they're because they fucking love the game. Yeah, Rochdale yeah. staying in League One. Like, it's not great, but for them, and the fact that I come from one of their own was unbelievable. And the fact that he, the 12 months he'd had before was, i say, I was going to, I was happy to retire because I thought I'll never feel that good again. I bet a lot of people on the pitch that day will say, probably say the same thing. Not about retiring, yeah. but one of the highest moments. The best thing, yeah. yeah. Well, Charlton were, you can say I that. think Charlton were in the playoffs already. So if you watch, have you seen it on YouTube where we're all still on the pitch? By the time we get in, into the tunnel where, you know, watch there, it's like it's dead narrow. The whole rock, uh, Charlton team clapped JT in. And Lee Bowie shook his hand at the end and went, I'm so happy we was here for this. Yeah. And they, they were in the, play they, they needed something to be in the playoffs. 
he still scraped in anyway. So they were there to beat us. Mm. Lucky enough, they got in and we stayed up and every single one of them shook his hand because it went about, it was just about him that yeah. day. Yeah. What a guy, man. Yeah, unbelievable. It's a first fair play from them as well. Yeah. Honestly, mate, to a man or every single one of them lined up, clapped them in, shook his hand. And then in the dressing room afterwards, you know, when you just sit there and it's like everyone's still buzzing and you're like, I don't think it gets any better than this. I remember 21 years of age, like playing in a fucking Carlin Cup semi final at Old Trafford with Ronaldo and Rooney and 80,000 people thinking, this is football. This is what it's about. I mean, I'd swap that any day of the week for 5,000 people. That's and JT being like, it was, that day was just about him. Mm. That meant more to me than definitely worth a watch anything. on YouTube. Have you seen oh, it? have you seen yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Mate, it makes you it makes you yeah. like actually yeah, feel like you're gonna cry, pimples. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just emotion, but to be part of it was was incredible, and he's still a good mate. Trying to speak to him once, twice every couple of weeks just to make sure families are good and stuff like that. So it's good, mate. Was <laughs> sorry, mate? Were you at? Uh, did you go to Blackpool with a sniper's dream? Boya. No, after Boya. The what? Sniper's dream? <coughs> Melonhead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was, so I left Rochdale. You've got a big head. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's, it's actually weird. Wait, this is a weird story. I left Rochdale. And as I said to you, I was, I was well ready to call okay. it a day, yeah. So I was... Sit, where was I? I went for some food with Sasha and the kids... And I was at the bar getting some drinks and what's his name? Terry McPhillips. Yeah. Yeah, Terry Mark Phillips was in there with his family. So it was actually transfer deadline day. So he was four years first team coach at yeah. Blackpool and assistant at Blackpool? Yeah, so he was assistant at Blackpool, but he then got the job because yeah. Bowyer had gone. So well, at the bar, I was ordering some food for the kids, a couple of drinks. He was doing the same. He asked me how I was. I said, yeah, good. He said, oh, listen, I've got a shoot. We're signing Chucks and Ike. Like, this is transfer deadline day. I'm like, all right, mate, no worries. I'll see you in a bit. So he walks off. Left his hunter's chicken. You are? <laughs> Look at that. Left his, left his scram. <laughs> Fucks off. So I'm just sitting there eating. I've got a couple, had a couple of pints thinking, fucking loving this. I'm not interested. And he comes back about 20 past five. I think it was five o'clock deadline. He comes back about 20 past five. What are you doing? Are you still playing? And I'm like, what do I fucking look like? <laughs> <laughs> like making a fucking ultimate stack burger, here, mate. <laughs> a pint. And he was like, hey, now listen, we haven't we haven't managed to get him when you come in. Just help us out. I was like, listen, I don't, I'm not interested. Don't want to play. It's getting too much for me. Like body was breaking down, I was sore all the time. He was like, come on, just come in and help us out till January. I'll put you on the bench. Last 10, 15 minutes, if we need something, we'll throw you on. I was like, all right then. Go on then, I'll do it. This is all in the pub. <laughs> all in the pub, mate. But you have to get this round. You have to, get this uh, round. You this have round to pay here. the bill here, mate, because I've just ordered another round. <laughs> so, yeah, I just went to Blackpool just to help out. Literally, all I was done, mate. Just all agreed over a mega burger. Yeah, I was done. Job done. Yeah, it was, it was over. Like... As much as I loved it, it didn't outweigh the pain I was in. Like, mate, I've had 15 ups on me right knee, which is a lot. But people don't see what you're actually, how it feels. So I'll play on a Saturday, but can't fucking walk till Wednesday. Yeah. But the fans the fans and other people don't see it. You used to not understand how it feels. It's lonely. Yeah. And it just, it didn't feel like, I didn't feel anything towards the game. Didn't feel like I owed it anything. So I just, Decided to call it a day until he bought me a bag of nuts and a bottle. And then from there, mate, yeah, it was, I agreed to go till the January. And then in the December, I had a phone call from Martin Cannon. But by that time, because I was getting fitter, and I was getting 15 minutes a year, 20 minutes there. Raf got back into the it. The fire was back, yeah. So he offered me a chance to go up to Scotland. And to be honest, I was thinking, fuck that. I don't want to go up to play in Scotland. 
I had a look at the fixtures, mate. It said Celtic away, Rangers away. I said, go ahead, mate, I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the reason why I went. The experience. Yeah, just as I was, I'd like to sort of bucket list. Yeah. Went up there. It was, to be fair, mate, unbelievable. Like, such a small club. I know you've had Killer on, haven't you? Killer was there when I went. <clears throat> even smaller club than you can even imagine. Smaller than Rochdale? My, mate, not even in the same... I'd say in 700 fans every game. That's small. That, that's how small it is. And the fact that they've been in the SBL for, what is it now? It's probably seven, eight years. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. But you know what I was saying to you before about that small feeling where it becomes personal. Mate, like, this was like unbelievably personal. Like, you bought into it. Uh, imagine oh, you, I imagine in, you like, have yeah. no... Proper, uh, imagine you, you know all the fans by Yeah, you know everyone. The community like, club, you Yeah, know. like, really. And so I agreed to stay for the six months till the end of the season. And to be fair, mate, we would, it looked like we were dead and buried. Like, they were miles adrift. On the last day of the season, we needed to win by two goals and someone else lose. And it must have been... 91st, 90th minute, the other team conceded for a draw. We were, we had a throw in, and Brian Rice had got the job by that time. He said, Dave, oh, we need a goal and we're up. Mate, I swear, the ball dropped to me and I hit it. And it went in, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> well, actually, stay, you know, on my right foot. And then from that, that moment, mate, he offered me a new deal for another year, and I was like, yeah, go ahead, take it. And that so, was, was that? How close to the Rochdale moment with that moment? Because this is Twelve your month. So I no, I mean, it, it, I mean, personally, personally, yeah. So I mean, personally, it was it, that was a, a nice feeling because it was about me. That's what but, I mean. But well. that, but it being about me was more a clarity of right now. You know that there's nothing left. Do you know what I mean? So where JT's was personal, but meant everything. Just to be in that limelight for 10, 15 minutes was enough for me to say, right, well, that's definitely it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I only signed the, the 12 months after that because I had gentleman agreements, like I'll stay. But the, the, last, the last 12 months, man, I was nowhere near. Mm -hmm. I think I was physically, no, not physically, mentally just done. Yeah. So obviously then COVID comes. And I just decided myself, right, that's it. I had a phone call four days ago from the Barrow manager. Will you come and play till the end of the season? No. Not bothered? No, nah, not no more, mate, because it's not... Don't take this the wrong way, mate, but Barrow must be struggling. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. When was it? Was it a year ago? Yeah, Longer March. Than a year ago. March was the last game I played at Ibrox. So I've gone out playing at Ibrox in front of 50,000. We beat them 1-0. It's not a bad finish, place to walk it? out, yeah. is it? Good place to finish. <laughs> yeah. But that's, they phoned me to, to see if I'd, I'd come and help out. I was just like, nah. But to be fair, even Barrow, they're the, point, the, the actual performances and points have actually picked up, haven't they? So, but it's just, just not there, mate. Like, so you're happy though, <clears> Yeah. Yeah. Talking about it all, you know, how we have done for the last few hours, how, how do you look back on it all now with like, You've some um, massive highs. Yeah, some some, some well. massive highs, probably even bigger lows. But then if you was to say to me, would you change anything? I'd probably say no, mate. Because as cliche as it sounds, I'm still here. After, you know, JT's was completely different. So he's lucky that he's still, he's still here because he's a fighter. Like mine was just pure luck. I didn't have to fight another two centimeters, uh, two millimeters, and there was no fight. So I'm lucky in that sense where that's why I wouldn't change it. Because mm -hmm. if I changed, if I said I'd change one thing, I'd look back and go, well, if that wasn't the same, then I would never play it again. Yeah. So, yeah, I, all in all, mate, if I look back, I wouldn't change it. Uh, if, I could, if I could give you one moment <clears throat> to experience again, yeah. right now. Would it be that goal at Hamilton to keep him up? 
the look on Nigel's face as then balloons just drift down. <laughs> <laughs> I think you want to see the, the fucking JT more than your fucking electric. <laughs> nah, just, just nah, the you're not going to talk about the yeah. double click on the booth. <laughs> 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 Tremendous man. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, man. Brilliant. Brilliant. Cheers. Happy days. Hot, get I the fucking air. Get 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 the f